So my style of pho is non-traditional traditional. When you taste it, you'll be able to taste all of the flavors that are very you know, familiar. I've been able to add different layers that are very true to the way that I eat and the way that I cook. You can totally tell that the stock at its core or the broth at its core is something entirely different than you'll see at a regular mom and pop restaurant. I feel like the people that really appreciate meat and really appreciate a really hearty broth, they will taste it and they will feel, oh wow, you could really taste the intensity of the beef and the love that's in there. And then there's the flip side where people were like, oh, this doesn't taste like anything like my grandma makes, right? And either way, it's okay. It's something that I can call my own and feel very happy and proud of. So it's about 10 p.m. I'm here at Pat Lafrito Warehouse. I'm going to be picking up some bones and some meat to restart my mother's stock. I know it's a little late, but that's when the magic happens and that's when they start working and breaking down all the meats for many restaurants throughout the city. So this is where our burgers get processed. We do a special blend of eight ounce patties with dry aged ribeye, short rib, and just regular ribeye. It goes through these machines. So I got a couple of beef shanks here that the guys picked out for me, and this is gonna go into our beef stocks. This is Pat Lafrida. He's taken me in and taught me a lot about the different types of bones and meat. This type of emotion with gripping our, our knife. And I'm gonna remember that when we come up towards the kneecap, that's where we use the flexibility of the knife. So when I first started making pho, I would just go to the store and just pick up you know, a bag of bones, throw it into a pot, fill it up with water, and voila, I'm making a bone broth. The more I started cooking, the more I realized that my stocks have been varying in color and taste. It made me very curious and I was like, why is this happening? So about six years ago was when I started going out to the Frida Warehouse. When I was introduced to Pat, I told him, I really want to learn more about why people use certain you know, cuts for stews, for stocks, for searing. From that blossomed a very great relationship between myself and the team at La Frida. But when chefs come in and they want to learn about cutting meat, we, we always embrace that. I learn something new every time I come here, even though I'm making the same recipe. One time Pat told me, you know, maybe you should consider using shank because once we break down the shank, then we can use the shank bone, split it in half, and there you got your bone marrow. I truly use every part of it, from the meat to the tendon to the bones. Through that, it truly helped transform my perspective in terms of the different types of food that I was cooking, it translated into like how can I utilize that information to make it more cost effective and efficient for the restaurant. And then these guys over here, we usually give over to Ekwa and he goes through the van saw and he, and he cuts some canoe cut for us. Look how beautiful these are. All that marrow. I'm gonna take you into one of my favorite rooms in the whole entire world, the dry age room. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna need 60 days, Pat. Nothing more, nothing less. I've tried them at every age, and I really like the flavor profile of 60s because 30 is a little bit too mild, and 90 is just too funky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this baby down and we're going to extract the bone and then honestly take everything with me. Traditionally, in Vietnamese cuisine, we don't use dry aged beef. When I started working with it, I would start off with very conservative amounts of dry aged beef fat, dry aged meat, just to have a little better understanding of what fits my flavor profile. You know, you have to be very careful with the amount that you use just because sometimes a little bit too much and it just really ruins the whole dish. On you know the, the days that I need assistance, Manny's my guy. <laughs> Smells like beef jerky. Asking questions, seeing them work has brought upon a lot of curiosity and that truly shaped my cooking. She used to come often be working for 10, 12 hours in the restaurant and just showing to keep learning more and more about the meat. It's something that you don't see in every person. Manny used to always tell me, don't be afraid. Because before it's like, oh man, I'm working with a lot of expensive um, products here. I really can't mess up. She mastered her skills really good and 
She's becoming who she is right now. I'm gonna take this, gonna put it in a separate box. These are the briskets that we use. I don't really do anything else to them just because this is thrown into the beef stock as a whole. I gotta show you this new machine, it's very cool. If you're looking for a specific cut, you enter it into the machine, you place your cut of meat on it, it weighs it, and it cuts it precisely. It's wild. So I need two pieces of porterhouses that are roughly two inches thick, 50 ounces. Voila! <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that beautiful? We just need our neck bones and our oxtail, and we're ready to go. <laughs> what a haul, huh? Thank you! Before we take off with the meat, we have to weigh it. You gotta spend money to make money, right? <laughs> right now, it's about midnight. <laughs> We're gonna head back to the restaurant and start my stock. So it's now 12.30 a.m. We're back at home base, and we are going to unload and start the mother stock. So we are going to fill this baby up and load him up with bones. Okay, so I like to start off with bones. Bones first before I put any of the proteins in. So we are going to start with our beef shanks. So these are going in first. When you look at the menu, it's Helen's beef pho. It's not just pho. I like a lot of flavors in, in the food that I eat and the food that I cook. I'm gonna move on to the neck bones. I love that there's a good amount of meat on these neck bones. We can extract all the meat and use them for stews. So once a year, I restart the mother stock. The goal here is to create a very beefy stock that we can use for a million things. And you'll see everything that comes out of the, the, the pot serves a really beautiful purpose. Once the bones are in, I add the meat. So now we're gonna put the, the beef shanks in. All right, brisket, brisket going in. So right here I have some oxtails that I'm gonna throw into the beef stock. These are non-negotiables. Must always have brisket, must always have oxtails. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. If I could just make stocks and stare at this for hours, I would. I'm thinking that it's going to be roughly 45 minutes until we come into like a full boil and then I want it to go at a rolling boil for at least 15 minutes. I watch the meat because, you know, there's a different, you know, cooking time for each cut of meat. We're at minute 45 and look at the baby. She's at a rolling boil. I'm gonna skim. This is one of the most gratifying experiences because you know that the more you skim, the clearer the, the stock becomes. It's just pure joy, pure joy. And then now, I take this guy. I don't need a whole lot of movement. I just need to make sure that there's a little bit of separation so that it can breathe. So I'm gonna keep it at a rolling boil for another 15 minutes just to make sure that you know things are getting cooked properly. And then I'm gonna bring it down to a simmer. And can you see the color of the fat forming right now? It's so gorgeous. And you'll see this transform over the hours into something like a, like a deeper golden yellow. All right, so it's about, I don't know, four. We're on hour four of our stock. Um, as you can see, we have about an, an inch and a half to two inches of rendered fat. This is essentially our liquid gold here. It's time to pull out the brisket and the shank and all the meats so that we can cool them in time to prep for service. Just look at that, that's beautiful. And this is the color that, that we strive for, every batch. It all starts from here. So now that we've taken all of the meat out, remember this beautiful guy, this dry age rack of rib and meat? So at this point is when we're gonna add him into the baby mother stock, just to be able to enhance the, the beefy flavor. And then we sit and we wait for another two to three hours. So we are going to pull apart some of the oxtail meat that we took out earlier. This is going to go into our fried rice. So this is what I mean when so many dishes come out of that one master stock. The mother stock doesn't just lend itself to our pho. It's an essential to our sauces and a lot of elements that you know we, we utilize in our daily menu. It's coming off the bone very easily. I personally don't like cooking it 
too much just because I still like the chewy texture and have it have like a bouncy bite rather than have it completely fall apart. Out of that one big mother stock, we got our oxtails, we all have our beef shanks, we have our brisket. All of this is gonna contribute to at least five other dishes. That's why she, she's called the mother stock. So this is the back fat from yesterday's rib rack. I'm going to cut them into smaller pieces and then we're gonna render them. And we're gonna utilize the fat for fried rice, for saute. So then I'm just gonna turn it on low because we want it to slowly render. So for oxtail fried rice, the wok is on. We are going to add dry aged beef fat. We have oxtail and we have some beef shank. Throw some onions. All of our meat in there. Special oxtail sauce. So we have a jasmine rice. At this stage of cooking, I still think about my visits at the warehouse, you know? From the point you gotta pick the meat, you gotta have nice, fun conversations with the guys. They always ask me, what am I gonna do? So we're gonna finish it off with a little bit more rendered beef fat. So this is the base of it. I'm gonna fry an egg and I'm gonna top it. So our family size oxtail fried rice with oxtail and beef shank and a fried egg fried in beef fat. Remember that dry aged rack of rib bones with the meat? I'm taking it out now because if not, it's going to really mess up the ratio of our mother stock. At this point, what this mother stock tastes like is just a very beefy water. <laughs> So what I have here is two pans. In one pan, we are going to toast spices. In the other, we're going to sweat some onions, some ginger, and some shallots. When you do a little cooking and toasting before you put it in, I think that it really blooms. And here I have a bunch of my spices that are gonna you know, go into my beef stock. All the aromatics have been sitting for about an hour and a half. Very nice. The spices are where I want them to be, so I'm going to take everything out. I think mother stock of 2023 is beautiful. The neck bones are definitely enhancing the beefiness of the stock, which I love. So now that we have strained all of the aromatics, I am going to add rock sugar. And then we're gonna add our salt. I load up on cilantro stems, so we use a lot of cilantro in our cooking, we save all the stems. The cilantro stems are an essential to my stocks. This is almost as important as the beef to me. So this brisket was cooking in the mother stock pot for about four and a half hours. So I'm removing the cilantro stems. Now we have pho broth. It's no longer a stock, it's a broth. We have our setup. We have our sliced ribeye. We have our sliced brisket. And then we have the garnishes, which is scallion, cilantro, and sliced onion. So when we fire a bowl of pho, we blanch the noodles. And then from here, a couple slices of the brisket. And then the ribeye that we picked up yesterday, thinly sliced. So then we have our beautiful pho broth. As we're ladling the broth, we're cooking that raw meat inside. So what I'm looking for is that nice golden brown color, but also clarity of the broth, which you can see here. We're gonna do some scallions, and then we're gonna do some cilantro. And there you have Helen's beef pho. A very beautiful, beefy bowl of pho. Noodle soup. <laughs>